All right, good morning, everybody. Let's go and get started. Today's video, I'm going to be going through a move called the side swing, which a lot of people probably know, but this will be a good video for you, even if you do know what the side swing is, because I'll explain different advantages that come with the side swing and I'll demonstrate it with a bunch of different kinds of ropes. I have the short rope, the one half pound cross rope, and I have a long handle rope, and then I have more of a lighter or speed rope. And so yeah, we'll just go through it like that and I'll teach you how to do this move the way I learned it, and we'll just go through it. So I'm gonna start off with some running in places or shadow jumps, just to get warmed up because I don't have any pants, workout pants, they're all in the laundry because I just got back from a trip. And so I'm in shorts, so I'm trying to stay warm. So I'm just gonna start with a warm up here. And then I'll demonstrate the move take you through it the way I learned. If this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe. It's free to subscribe on YouTube and hit the thumbs up button. There's a lot of benefits to this move. There's also a lot of misconceptions about this move. I posted a video. It's the video on Instagram last video I posted on Instagram of me doing side swings a little bit faster than normal. And most people were, were really nice about it, but you had some people who either they just don't really understand jump rope or they're mad that they can't do, do it at that speed or I don't know, they just don't understand it. But they're like, oh, he's not jumping over the rope, it's fake. Or, Oh, it's not a jump rope move because you're not jumping over the rope. So if you ever hear anyone say that about the side swing, don't listen to them. They have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And, I'll, and I'm going to discredit, that's not the main point of this video, but what I'll do, hopefully by the end of this video, if you don't know the benefits of it, you'll know the benefits of it and it'll completely discredit the people who say that it's fake jump rope and all that stuff. Because most of the time, the people in those groups that are negative and that throw shade at other people, they're the ones that have absolutely no idea what they're doing. So you want to stay away from those people and stay away from their negativity. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll demonstrate the side swing now and then I'll go through how to do it with a couple drills that I learned on how to do it. So this is what the side swing looks like. You go to one side and then you jump through the rope. That's what it looks like very slowly. This is what it looks like using both sides. See, I'm going over to my left, right, left, right. So as you can see, I actually am jumping over the rope after I go through it. In the video, I was doing it a lot faster than that, but you can see I'm jumping through the rope. And so there's a lot of keys to this move. The main one is your wrists. When you do the side swing, you need, you're turning your wrist over. So I'm a little bit closer to the camera now, so I'll be able to show you. This is what it looks like without jumping through, and you can see I'm turning my wrists over like that. And it's a shoulder movement as well. You can see my shoulders are activated. It's an upper body movement. So that will tell you that if you have a weighted rope, like the half pound cross rope, and you're having trouble jumping, you might have an injury, you can just do this with the half pound cross rope or the pound and get a decent upper body workout. So this is all you're doing with the side swing. Just over and over like this. And what I was doing earlier was I was going through 
on one side. You can go through on one side. What I recommend is if you're right-handed like me, you do what I'm doing, and you go to your left like this, and then so right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, like that. You just do one side. Get comfortable with your dominant side. And I'm going to my left first because my right hand is what is pulling the rope open. If you're left-handed, you want to do the exact opposite. That's how you want to start out. So if you're left-handed, you would go like this, and you'd be leading with your left. It's the exact same thing, except I'm leading with my left. Oh, I went back to my right, see? This is how you want to start this move. You don't want to do anything fancy. So right now, what we'll do is we'll do one minute of just going like this. Just do this. We don't even want to jump through the rope yet. We just want to be able to get the motion down. So what you're doing with the side swing is you're coming through and you're going over like that. And you're keeping your dominant hand on top. So just try doing this. And even if you know how to do this already, this is a great move. It's a great way to come back to the fundamentals. Notice how my arms aren't way out like this. This makes the move, and I'm hitting the top of my garage here, but this makes the move really inefficient. And this is what it looks like from the side. You don't want to do any of this. See how bad that looks, how inefficient that looks? You want your arms close in to your body. Like that, see how efficient and less awkward that looks. That's how it should look from the side. And if you're, and if this is your first time doing this, you're probably already noticing that if you're using a five millimeter rope like I'm using right now, you're already starting to feel your shoulders, especially your right shoulder, because that's the one leading. So just keep doing this. This is all you do. This is the basic side swing without the jump. Now, this is what it looks like from the other side. All I'm doing is, this is what you should be doing if you're left-handed. You're leading with your left hand. And all you're doing is your right hand is just following. I know that it seems a little bit tedious just to do this over and over again. But when you do this over and over again, it's going to create the pathways in your brain to form the muscle memory that you need to be able to do this move without thinking. So the only way to do that is with repetition, just like this. So if you're right-handed, it should look like this. If you're left-handed, it should look like this. And later on in this video, I'm gonna explain why eventually you wanna be able to do both sides. It's really important to be able to do both sides, just like if you play basketball, or even any sport, it's good to be able to use your non-dominant side. Like soccer, if you play soccer or football, as they call it in pretty much every country other than the U.S., if you can, if you're right-handed, if your right side of your body is dominant, you still need to be able to kick with your left. Because if you're on the left side of the field, it'll make the hard, it'll make it harder for the opponent to steal the ball, to tackle you and steal the ball. Right? So this is what you do if you're right-handed, just like this. And this is what it looks like left-handed. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some slow side swing and jumps through the rope. And all I want you to do is one side. And you wanna start off with a five millimeter cord like this. If you have a cross rope or a weighted rope that's heavier, you wanna start with that. You wanna have a heavy rope that's just heavy enough to where it's not gonna cause you to get too tired very quickly, but it's gonna be heavy enough to provide the feedback. You don't necessarily wanna start with a light rope like this, even though this is a good rope, the rhythm rope. You don't wanna start with a light rope like that when you're doing this in the beginning, if you're, if you're a beginner at this. And you don't wanna start with this 
rope here because it's too light. You want to start with a five millimeter PVC cord with short handles. Okay, so now what we'll do is if you're right handed, remember, we're going to do this. Oh, like that. That's all you're going to do. And then you're going to try jumping through the rope. But before we get into that, you go to your right and then open. And that's when you jump through the rope. You actually jump through the rope. Remember, you're not doing like that, all this stuff here, tight into your body like that. And you should be opening from in between your hip and the lower part of your chest. And the jump rope dudes video that I did, one of them opens up from up here. I'm not saying that's incorrect because he's able to do it, but it's going to be a lot more, it's going to be less efficient if you're opening up from here than if you're opening up from here. So you can see, I'm going to do it slowly. See where I'm opening from? It's less, it's less distance if you open up from here than it is from here. So the less distance you're opening up, the less likely it is you're going to trip over the rope and you're going to mess up. So practice that again. Go to the side and then go through like this. Keep practicing that because once you get this down, the only thing that you need to be able to do is jump through the rope. So do a couple of them like this. If you're right handed, do a couple of them like this and then come through like that. Now if you're left handed, you're just going to do the exact same thing except on the other side. So I'm starting off with my left hand. My left hand's on top, and then I'm on my right side, and then I open. Left hand on top, over to the right, open, okay? Now left side. See how I open up. Once you open, that's when you jump through. And then when you jump through, you can either keep jumping or you can do another one. So if I jump through, then I come back through, pretend I'm over the rope, and then I do another one. So the possibilities are endless. The reason why you want to learn this move here, there are so many benefits. There's, you can use it as an active rest. You can use it as your main source of cardio. And you can use it to transition from other moves. So if I was doing, if you watch Floyd Mayweather's video, he does the, he does, what he does in his sequences, he does like 15 or 20 double under crossovers. And then he uses a quick side swing like that to transition over to the running crossover. And I can do a demonstration of that a little bit later. But you can watch his videos. It's the fight hype video that's got like 7 million views on YouTube that pretty much everybody has seen. And, but you have to watch it because he uses the side swing to transition. And also there's a lot of shoulder benefits and everything like that as well. And it's a good active rest move. So you can just, if you're getting too tired, you've seen my workouts before. If you're getting too tired, there's nothing wrong with just doing something like this. The side swing double or doing the single like this and just kind of lightly being on your feet like this until you can regain your cardio and then get back into it. So that's what it would look like from the right side. That's what it would look like from the left side. See, so there's lots of benefits there. So anyone who's saying, oh, it's fake, you're not jumping through the rope, don't listen to them. They have, they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. This move is great for coordination as well, okay? So remember, the drills. The drills to leading up to it, you don't even want to start jumping yet. The drills to leading up to it, the progression is one side like this if you're right-handed, just getting used to the movement, using your wrists. You're not doing like that, you're doing this is what it looks like from the side. See what my wrists are. My wrists are the ones doing all the rotation. If you're left handed, it looks like this. Right handed, it looks like this. And now, what you want to do is now you want to do this. Trick. Start, do a couple. 
and over. This is what it looks like from the right. This is what it looks like from the left. got to be able to get that down. Once you get comfortable with that, then you're ready to actually go into the jump. And you want to take this real slow. So once you actually are ready, now you've been able to do this without any problem. Now you're actually going to jump. Just jump one time. Just one time. And I'm doing the right-handed version, but the left-handed version looks exactly the same, except it's on the other side. All right? So once you can do that, we're going to do it again. Then you want to start swinging it, to, stringing it together. So do one. Then once you, this is probably the hardest part for a lot of people, is doing more than one in a row. Because normally what you'll do is you'll start jumping, you'll be jumping. And then you'll keep jumping. But what we want to do is do continual side swings so that you can burn that pathway into your brain. So that's what, this is what this looks like. Now the hardest part is after you do that first jump. What's happening is you're coming through, and then as the rope comes back over for when you would normally jump through it again, you have to redirect it back to your right side or your left side if you're left-handed. You have to redirect the rope. This is the hardest part, and this takes the most coordination, and this is what requires the most practice so that you can get it, you can get it down pat. All it is is muscle memory. But this is what requires the most practice. So I'll do it again, as slow as I can. Now, you redirect the rope. You don't jump back through it. You have to redirect it to your side again. Instead of jumping through it, you're not doing this. You're doing this. Redirect, redirect, redirect. And I'm exaggerating and putting my right hand out because I'm showing you what you're exactly you're doing but you want to keep your arms staying close to your body so as the rope is preparing to come back over you to jump through you have to redirect it to your side you have to get control of it because if you don't control the rope it's just gonna go wherever it was wanting to go you have to re you have to control the rope redirect it to your side go back to your left and then go through again. Now, this is really important. If you're just starting with this move, what I don't want you to do is to try to do anything other than to stay on the balls of your feet and do a basic jump through the rope. I don't want you to do this yet. I don't want you to see my feet moving. Don't try to do any of that yet. That's just gonna, it's gonna complicate things. What you wanna focus on is just getting the move down because a lot of people have trouble with the footwork. The footwork comes later. What you wanna do is just get the move down. So you wanna just stay on the balls of your feet when you're jumping through. You don't wanna do any, any of the boxer step or anything like that. Don't do that yet, that comes with time. So look at my feet, I'm staying still. And I'm jumping through. The reason why I say that is I don't want you to try to do too many things at once. I just want you to be able to get the move first. I want you to be able to get the move first and then worry about doing this later. I'll go over that later. This is all I want you to do now. And slow it down. If you need to slow it down, slow it down. Left-handed, right-handed, right-handed, 
Dude, I got mixed up there. Got my sides mixed up. Left handed, right handed. Now this is what both sides looks like. If you're just starting off, and see, that's the other funny thing about it too, is that sometimes it takes even more energy to do what I'm just doing than actually jumping through the rope continuously which is the other funny thing about it. People say that this move, there's no benefits to this move, and that it's fake because you're not jumping through the rope every time. That's another reason you shouldn't listen to those people. They, they don't know, they really have no, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just being honest with you. They, they just don't have any idea what they're, what they're talking about. You can see I've probably burned more calories doing that than I would with a, with a basic jump. It'd probably be close, but it takes a different kind of energy and a different kind of strength to be able to do that move. That's why you want to learn. All right. So now you have the drills. We'll go over the drills again. So first, starting off, you're just doing this, getting used to the move, no jumping. And I'm doing everything from the right-handed side. So left-handed is the opposite. Your left hand's on top. The next thing is once you get comfortable with this, you do a couple side swings and then open. A couple side swings, open. A couple side swings and then open. And then once you get comfortable with that, you go to one jump. And then you do two. Redirect. Redirect, jump, redirect, jump, redirect, jump, redirect, jump, redirect, jump. That's how you learn this move. It is not as difficult as it may seem, but it does take a little bit of coordination, especially if you want to do what I was just doing earlier. So those are the three, the first three drills that you want to get before you start trying to, instead of jump off one foot, both feet jump off of one foot primarily. Now I've gone over this, and I'm gonna switch over to another rope here. I'm gonna switch over to the long handle rope because that's what I'm most comfortable with. But if you're if you're just beginning, I'd say stick with your short handle rope. Alright, but the footwork is a lot of time what quite literally trips people up, okay? So what you have to think about here is that it's a boxer step. So a boxer step. It's just like a variation on the boxer step. So watch my feet as I do this and see if you notice anything. Here's the jumping off both feet and now here's Here's jumping off of one foot primarily. So what you're going to do with this is if you're right-handed and you're going to your right side and then left open, you're going to be jumping primarily off of your left foot. It's the same principle as going up for a layup in basketball. Okay, so if you're going up for a layup in basketball, for people who play back, who play or still play basketball, if you're going up with your right hand for a one-handed layup, you're jumping off your left foot. The exact opposite is true for if you're going up with your left hand, you're jumping off your right foot. It's going to be really awkward to go up like this. I mean, people still do it, but it's very awkward and it's not technically correct in, in basketball. Same thing with this. See how awkward that looks? It's because you're using one side of your body. But see, this looks a lot better, and it's easier, and it's more natural. And it is the natural way to do it. So a layup would be like that, and then right-handed would be like that. The same thing holds with the side swing. And the reason is because you're balancing out your body's equilibrium. So if I was to jump off of my right foot while I was doing this, trying to open the rope up, 
everything would be on the right side of my body, so it would mess up my body's equilibrium. But if I'm jumping off my left foot, see how different that looks? Jumping off my left foot. What you're gonna do if you're right-handed. Now, if you're left-handed, everything is opposite of what I'm, what I'm saying here, and I'll demonstrate left-handed as well. But what you're gonna do is, as soon as you go over, you're gonna take a step with your right foot like that. And I'm exaggerating a little bit. But, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but step, open, step, open. Now this is what it looks like without the exaggeration. Now exaggeration. Step open. And as soon as you're opening, you're jumping with your left foot. Now, here's why you want to learn both sides. Because if you only do your side swing to one side and you're constantly jumping off your left foot, if you're right handed, then one foot is going to get more attention than the other. Or one leg is going to get more attention than the other, which might cause one leg to become stronger than the other. And I think that I've actually found problems with this because my left foot I can feel is a little bit stronger than my right because of that. Because I didn't realize that you need to be able to do it on both sides so that both feet get equal treatment, okay? So now, left-handed, I'm going to demonstrate how to do this left-handed. Remember with left hand, you're jumping off your right foot, okay? So it's the same thing as this, as the right side step. See, even now, it takes me thinking about it to do it because I'm right-handed. So if you're left-handed, this is what you should look like. See? And see, I always go to my right side. See, even for someone who's been jumping like me for a couple of years, you still have those tendencies. feel it after you do those moves you're gonna feel like I'm feeling it in my right my right leg now because my right leg was doing most of the work there that's why you got to be able to do both sides once you get the drills down that we went through in the beginning this is what this is an exercise that you want to do you want to do both sides and this is what both sides looks like so I start See, I'm moving from side to side a little bit. This is the level that you want to be able to get to with the side swing. You want to do both sides. Both sides. Okay. But before you get to there, there's another drill that you can you can use to get there, and it's it's a variation of the drill that we just just did. So you're not going to do the footwork or jump off one foot. You're just going to do this. Now other side. That's all you're going to do to be able to get to what I was just doing. You want to get used to the movement first. This is the drill. It's very simple, but it's very beneficial to being able to use the side swing for both sides, which is what you want to be able to do. It's crucial to be able to do the side swing on both sides. Now, you can have, I mean, for me, I'm going to, my right hand is going to dominate. 
My right hand's gonna be the dominant hand. So if I'm doing something really fast, like that Floyd Mayweather sequence, I'm not gonna go to my left side. It's gonna go to my right side because that's what's in my brain and that's the pathway that's formed. But that's only one time, right? Whenever you're doing a side swing base workout or when you think of it and you're going a little bit more slow, you just want to try to do both sides so that each side gets equal treatment, right? <clears throat> so that's what you want to do with that. And so going back to the videos, it is really a simple move, but it's done quickly. So this is what it looks like done quickly. And you've probably seen the videos. This is what it is done quickly. So you'll see, you'll be able to see it. This right here equals this, equals, oh, I messed up. This right here equals this. See that? That's all it is. It's just opening, doing the side swing, and then I'm kind of going forward a little bit like this. So this is all I was doing. And then I had a couple of these right here, of side swing doubles, but that's all I was doing. So it looks really complex, but it actually isn't. What gets you to the speed part is practicing and being able to do the move without thinking. Because if you're thinking, it slows everything down. I mean, I've done the move so many times that I'm just able to do it without thinking about it. And even in the beginning, you saw I messed up. So you're still going to mess up sometimes. But that's all right. Yeah. So now, what I'll do, I went through the basics of the side swing and then why it's important to be able to do the side swing on both sides. Now what I'll do is I'll go through one of my favorite variations of the side swing, which is the double, the side swing double. This is what the side swing double looks like. You can see I'm not jumping at all. So this is one of the best active rest workouts you can do, or it's a, it's a stand-in if you are having leg issues or back issues and you can't jump. So what do you notice here? You notice that I'm using both sides and it's a double. So it's two side swings on each side and then I rotate. Now remember, I'm not, look, I'm not out here doing like this. I'm right here, in close like that. This is a move that Deontay Wilder, the boxer, likes to do. And I did a video on the way he does it. He has such long arms that he comes way out like this. Cause he's, I think he's like six foot six or six foot seven. So he comes out like this. I don't think that that's wrong. It just takes a lot longer to rotate the rope than if you stay close in like this. See how? It'd be a lot harder to do that if I was, I mean, I can still do it as fast, but the small movements are what is what's letting me do this fast. So it's the same as this. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And you can see I'm still moving. So a good example of this is if you're in the middle of a workout and you're really struggling, you're like, ah, oh, I just can't, I don't know if I can go anymore. Then you just go like this, just take your breath, and then you're back in, ah, and then you're back in, you see? You can also use it as the primary exercise, so you can, you can add like a heel toe in with it, You can do the boxer step with it. You're still getting your cardio too. So that's another one. So slow down. This is 
what it looks like. Remember, all your rotation should come from your wrists. See how my wrists are flexible and loose? Now my arm is still rotating, but, and see, this is what it looks like. Just slow it down. Slow it down as much as you can. Yeah, jump rope, most of your jump rope moves are going to involve jumping over a rope, over the rope, but there are plenty out there that don't involve it. And so if you have an injury, if you are having trouble, go to something like this. Now, you have the double like this, or you can do what we just did in the beginning, the first drill that we did, and you can just do a single like this. See how you can use that for an active rest? You'll start feeling it in your right shoulder. See? And you see I'm still moving. Now I'm switching over to my left. Now I'm double. Now single, single to the left, back to double. Single, single, double. See how that works? It's a really great way to be able to, it's coordination based too, because you're having to switch what your wrists are doing. But it's also a great active rest. Now, once you're able to do the side swing with the five millimeter cord, one thing that you want to try to do is get a weighted rope involved for a couple reasons. First, if you're having trouble with the feedback and you're not able to find the rope and you're having trouble when you're tripping up because you're not used to it, a weighted rope is going to be beneficial. Another thing that's beneficial about this is the shoulder workout that you get with a weighted rope. This is another reason why the people who, who want to say that the side swing is a fake jump rope move, they don't quite understand, is that even if you're doing this with a weighted rope, you do that for maybe a minute, which those people probably can't do. You're going to feel like you've just been doing bench presses or shoulder presses. And so, see this? Not only is it helping you understand where the rope is, you're getting that better feedback because the rope is heavier, but your shoulders are getting a very good workout. And you can see my shoulders being engaged right here. So if you want a challenge, try doing side swing and jumps with a weighted rope like this. See, I'm having to work way harder just to get the rope over. I'm having to rotate my wrists more. I'm having to use my shoulders more. right here in your shoulders because when you're rotating your wrists see what I'll do now is I'll go through the before I get into the actual workout that I was reconnecting 
incorporating each leg, yeah, that's something people don't know. And something I didn't know for a long time to do. Sure, thanks so much for the five dollar Marvin. Thanks a lot for the nine. I appreciate that. The ten, appreciate that. And mom, thanks a lot. All right, now what I'm gonna do now is actually do a workout and we're gonna go through the different different variations of the side swing. So if you wanna join me, grab your rope. You try to throw in the different moves as best you can. You don't have to try to keep up with me or if you're better, if you're not better than me, but if you, if you know how to do all this stuff, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can incorporate the side swing into the workouts on a regular basis and still get a lot out of it. I'm gonna do a 30 minute workout now and I can, I can guarantee you that after the 30 minutes, I'll be at around 300 calories or so, maybe in the high 200s. And I'm, it's gonna be a side swing dominated workout, okay? So grab your rope and we're gonna get into it. We're gonna start with a five minute jump. Five minutes sounds like a lot, but it'll go by quick because we're having fun. All right. Five minutes. And I'm using my long handle rope. You use whatever rope you want to use. All right, let's do this. See, I'm doing the couple. Double, so I'm not even jumping, but I'm still getting a good cardio workout. Single. This is a little bit more advanced. It's jumping on the same foot, kind of like doing a layup on the same foot. Both sides, remember both sides. This is, the, this is what it looks like in real time using both sides. Left, jump off my right, left, right. You see me moving laterally. See how you can use this move? Even if you just did this the entire time, you still be getting a great workout. Now I'm going to do a move that my friend Kyle at Jump 15 does, the side swing heel turn. You're going to see how effective this move is. See that? Single, single on the left, double. The 
Deontay Wilder style. Now tight end. Tight end to your body. Another one is this. Two. I'm having so much fun, the five minutes is almost up. See, in five minutes, well, yeah, I burned 60 calories already. See? See, now, if you weren't a believer, that'll make you a believer just in a calorie burn. 60 calories, and I've been at it for five minutes, 43 seconds. All right? Four minutes. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to use the same rope. And we'll just keep going. See how my feet are continuing to move. That means I'm still getting the cardio. My whole body's engaged. So you're going to be able to go a little with the side swing because you're not jumping over the rope. See, this is jumping over the rope. I'm still going pretty fast in there.
just that constant motion, constant movement. However it works for you, work the side swings in. But being able to go at pace, that's the key. And sustaining that pace. Six calories so far. So still got about 20 minutes to go. I'm going down to three, three minutes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a lighter rope and show you. I'll do side swings with a lighter rope like this. So let's do this. It's not going to be as freestyle oriented like that, but this is a boxer type rope, so it's gonna be different. All right, three minutes. But the point is you can still do it with other ropes like this. Not gonna be able to turn it as quickly. different rope, you can still do this move. Now speed and all that, it does sometimes depend on the rope, but the point is you'll still be able to do the move. It's good to be able to do the move with different ropes, because that way you'll be more versatile. Now I'm going to use the half pound rope to show you how you can get strength training out of this as well. 
I'm going down to two minutes. Let's do it. Bringing it in with the half pound rope. That is a hard workout. Do it one side. now with the Elite SRS. And that's one move I didn't show was the running side swing. Once you get really comfortable with the side swing, you can try doing it with running. Just like the alternate foot step, you just combine the alternate foot step with the, with the side swing like this.
saying like doing something else and then see but after you do something like mic release you can put it into a side swing just to control it so there's so many different moves and variations for this see and then you just go back into it See, it's a great way to transition to other moves. So you can also transition out of double unders with it and into it. So check it out. You can just go like this. And slow it down. So, yeah. Instead of having to jump back through the rope, after you do your double under, you just, like we were saying, you transition over to the side and then bring it back. Got 
Another side swing you can do is just a one arm. Like this, if you're tired, after you do something like that, go ahead and lay the sequence. Two hundred eighty-seven calories in twenty-seven minutes. So I got a three-minute jump left. I'll finish it out with a boxing rope, the rhythm rope here, and then we'll just keep going. Actually, I haven't used the pump rope at all. I just used it in the demo, so I'm going to use that, and then we'll just keep going. This is the last one, so stick with it. Got about, actually, at this point, we got about two minutes left. So take a quick rest. We'll do the last two minutes with the pump group. All right. Start with. Let's see, 317 calories in 30 minutes and 5 seconds. You can see that it's a workout. (laughs) 
Yeah. Tina, thanks a lot. Thanks, Tic Tac. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Everybody, appreciate it. I'll do a live question and answer. Appreciate all the support. Should have another video coming on Monday. And just got to keep getting after it. All, all day, every day. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. Consider sharing the channel with your family and friends if you think that they would get some benefit from it. And that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy. Jump rope to freedom. Peace. Have a great weekend.